Today on the show, we meet somebody changing lives around the globe while building an incredible IT and cybersecurity company right here in Dallas. Today's show is sponsored by the book For You From Me by Raj Daniels. If you don't know Raj, make sure you check out his interviews on this show I did for episodes one and two. The book, it's a daily dose of focus. This is not motivation by any means. That's fleeting. Raj's book is a perfect blend of the practical and the inspiring. A clear vision of how you should be approaching life presented in a way that is simple to take action on. This is how I start my mornings, with a quick lesson from Raj's book. It shifts my mind and anchors in an often new perspective for my day. And that's so important because it's not what happens to us throughout the day, but how we interpret what happens and how we choose to respond. Having more choices in how we craft those responses is incredibly powerful. So head over to Amazon and grab your copy today. Real quick before we get started, if you're here watching or listening, you've got some tie to this beautiful world of business of ours. Maybe you're an entrepreneur or consultant or a sales or marketing pro looking to network and get in front of more prospects. Maybe you're building your personal brand from inside the corporation you work for. Or maybe you have a cause that you're passionate about and want to spread the word. Video can help with all of these. We hear that a lot, but it's a big leap from knowing you should be doing it and understanding how. From knowing what to say to making sure you remain credible in the process. Let me help you with this. I've been creating great content for people just like you for 26 years now. I'll help you figure out the type of videos you need and what to say in order to get your message across and what you can do yourself and what you need help with. But getting your videos created is only half of it. How do you get them seen? I can help you optimize your videos to get found in search and develop a detailed strategy to get your videos in front of your target audience helping sell to the prospect before they ever meet you. Head over to croft.media. From there, you can reach out to me for a free strategy session. I look forward to connecting with you. How's it going, everybody? Jason Croft here, the Credibility Craftsman. And today we've got George McKay. I am just amazed with this gentleman, um, both in what he and his wife have, have built from day one, um, and but the but the purpose behind it from day one um, has just been incredible, and we'll dig into to all of that here in this show. But his story and what he and his wife have built is really a testament and something that I'm so impressed with. in companies who can who have this bigger vision, um, whether it's from day one or you know, they, they find that along the way. I think it's something that um, allows you as a company to, it makes things easier in the sense of you, you have something to judge every decision against, every choice that you make going forward. You can weigh it. Well, does it service on this vision or does it not? And it's an easy yes, no at that point. Um, and easy, right? Uh, <laughs> does not make building a company easy by any means or anything like that. Um, but it's maybe the, maybe the word is simplify. Maybe that's a, that's a better word because it, it makes you more efficient to judge everything against that, that bigger vision and that bigger plan for your company. And then when that bigger vision and bigger plan is something so life-changing to people around the world. Um, it's just an amazing, amazing thing. So um, I'll stop rambling now and let's jump in with George McKay. George McKay, welcome. Thank you. So glad you're, you, you're Jason. in the vehicle here. This is this is fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for you, the audience mm -hmm. there too, because I had the good fortune um, to be introduced to, to George from Tony Fleo and I got to to hear firsthand through a wonderful phone call that we had uh, much of your story, yes. and I I knew I had to share that uh, with my audience. Just just an amazing story and amazing what you're doing. But I'll stop talking about it. Give me a little brief overview mm -hmm. of uh, of your company, GXA, okay. 
and what that is now. And then, then I want to dig. Then I want to dig into the, to the story and what got you here. Absolutely. Thank you, Jason. And, and I'll drive while you do that. Okay. Uh, GXA, we are an IT consulting company. Uh, basically, our purpose is to provide best-in-class IT and security services to our clients, services that optimize their business performance. And our second purpose is to help um, provide uh, philanthropy to, uh, to, to the communities here locally and internationally. So we invest our profits and resources into good works that help um, create and sustain a better world and brighter future. So we, we have a very uh, kind of deep uh, philanthropical focus uh, through our company. And we've worked with uh, different partners across the world and here locally also to uh, really make a difference in the, in the world. And, and that's one of the aspects of, of your story and the company mm -hmm. that you've built that I really want to get into because that's not an afterthought. That's not, oh yeah, once, you know, with what's left over, we'll sort of see where we can help. That yes. is a core structure of your business and I, and I think Thanks. it's absolutely amazing. Thank you. Yeah, so let's, so that's a little tease to get into that story, but let's, you know, what brought you here? Dallas, Texas. Yes, I've been I've been here for twenty years. Awesome. Uh, believe it or not, it's just time flies so fast. But you know, I came here in ninety eight. It okay. was uh, October of ninety eight, and um, a little bit about myself. I'm from Kenya, and grew up and was raised in Kenya. And I went to a college in a, in a university called Moi in in the remote parts of Kenya, and I did electrical engineering. And during my fifth year of uh, the Bachelor of Elect uh, Electrical Engineering course, I, my parents called me, my dad called me, he, he actually sent a letter and said, hey, you know, I have some really urgent news for you. Can you come out uh, back home because, uh, you know, there's some, something that I want to tell you. So I drove back home over the weekend and <laughs> I met with them. And no idea what I was. Is. I was expecting bad news. Right, because that's usually had, how bad news yes, comes, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> usually, it's, yeah, it's usually something bad has happened. And so I was, like, I was prepared for the wars. And um, my dad told me, hey, you want a green card to go to the U.S.? I said, wow. what do you mean? And he said, hey, we applied for a lottery for all the family members. I have six siblings, and uh, you're the one who won. Wow. And, and so, and I, and I told, asked him again, what does that mean? He said, so basically, in about you know, six months, you're going to be in the United States. Wow. And that was right before graduation. So the, I actually graduated two months later. And when I left college, I basically went to the U.S. Embassy in Kenya and got a green card cut to the U.S. That's amazing. And, and that was something that even, you know, as a U.S. citizen, I had no idea about. Like how many of these a year? Like so what I learned was the United States has the green card lottery system. And they take about forty to fifty thousand immigrants every year, and and so it's millions of people apply uh, wow. from all over the world, and only forty thousand lucky people. It's generally a lottery, just like you think a lottery, because this is a chance of a lifetime to come to a first world nation, especially coming from a third world nation in Kenya. Oh yeah. So this was completely life changing for me, um, and. Um, as lucky as I was, you know, it happened right after I graduated from college. So I just I started a whole different life in a whole different country. Oh yeah, yeah. The the the, the benefits of all that, but also the challenges. In exactly. All of that, which has got to be, it's just, I mean, new life. I mean, new reality all exactly. around you, right? I, I was really excited. So you know, when 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 you apply for the green card, you have to have a sponsor. I just happened to have a, a long distance uncle who lives in. In, in Texas, in Dallas. Okay. So that's how I ended up in Dallas, Texas. Nice. And I stayed with him for a couple couple months before I found a place for my own. Um, and so when 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 I came out, I you know worked at TGI Fridays and Taco Bell for about six months, mm -hmm. save enough to to buy a car. You know that's yeah. one of the things that in migrant you don't realize is you you need a car to go to get <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. And so. Yeah. Um, you know, even though I had an electrical engineering degree, um, I couldn't really find a, a real job and, you know, a regular professional job until I, I had a way to transport myself around the city. Gotcha. So the first six months was really kind of saving enough money to, to, to be able to get the, the first car. And so another, you know, interesting thing is when I was in Moi University, which is a college that I went to in Kenya, um, there was a, a, a donation that was made by the British government through uh, Margaret Thatcher was the was the prime minister at the time, and he she actually built uh, a full blown computer lab 
in, 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 in the university. And so awesome. during my third year in college, we were introduced to computers. Nice. And I remember walking into that computer lab, there were about 100 computers, and I was just amazed. I'd oh, never yeah. seen a computer until my third, third year in college. Wow. And I just got hooked. Oh, yeah. And that completely changed the trajectory of my career because I started focusing more on the computer sciences versus focusing on the electrical engineering mm -hmm. side. And so my interest in, in computer technology and computer uh, computer support and all those on, on, and that kind of career really started when I got exposed to the computers at, at, the, at the college. Oh, that's great. And, and so when, when I got my first internship during the fourth year in college, I found a, uh, an IT support company in Nairobi, Kenya, and that's why I went to do my internship and kind of started developing my IT skills and, and expertise. Um, so when, when I came to the U.S. after, you know, the six months working and, you know, trying to get a car and kind of get my foundation built, I, I started looking for a regular job, uh, an IT job, and I found a job at a company called HBR Technologies, which is here in, in Carrollton. Gotcha. Okay. And I was their, you know, their IT support personnel for, you know, about five years. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. So, it, it was the plan when you came over, I mean, was it wasn't really just that basic, like, I have a chance over here, I have a way to start a new life, but uh, let me just find a job. Was there any kind of bigger picture at this point, or was it really just, let I think, me get there? Yeah, I think at that point, you know, just having come out of college, you know, you're just trying to get a job. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, I don't think you really don't have those, I mean, I, I, I've always wanted to start a business because I, my uncle, who was my guardian, when I grew up, owned a couple of real estate businesses. And so I've always uh, wanted to start a business, but that, at that time that was remote. Yeah, you know, I wasn't really thinking about that. I was just trying to get established in a completely new country, um, get adjusted to the new culture and um, new climate, everything else that right. comes with you know moving from you know from Kenya all the way to the United States. So you're there at, at HBR, yes, for five years. So and then what's what's sort of the the impetus to what, what got you to start? Now you're gonna start a company. Now that what's that? What was that change? Or so a lot of things happened. You know, the first the first year, you know, working at HBR was in 2000. I said my my first uh, I, I got hired in two, January of 2000, and um you know started working out there. And then I met my wife Alicia, who's also my business partner in 2000 towards the end of 2000. Gotcha. Very and, nice. Uh, and so we met, uh, fell in love, and got married in 2002. And during that process, we, uh, you know, we both joined uh, the Potter's House Church, which is a church right here in South Dallas. Bishop mm -hmm. T.D. Jakes is the, the senior pastor. And and we uh, we became part of the missions ministry. Oh, okay. And so we, uh, Alicia and I, started going out on mission trips uh, across across the country and also across the world. And around 2003, there was a conflict in Nairobi uh, in Kenya that happened between two tribes and about 200 people were killed mm -hmm. and Bishop Jake saw that conflict and he wanted our missions director to go out there and and see if he could find uh, a solution to you know to the, the problem that was going on yeah. uh, that was causing the, the conflict so he called him and, and assigned him the task the missions director reached out to me because I was from Kenya and asked me if I would like to accompany him on that trip Oh, yeah. And so I'd never been back to Kenya yet. That was actually the first time, about 2003, when I returned back home. Wow, so about and five years. About five years. And um, so it was fully paid for trip by the church. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, 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 I called my wife and I gave her the news and she was fully supportive of it. Of it. And so uh, my mission director, his name is Pastor Ronnie Gwines, and we both went, went to Kenya. And we were there for about 10 days. And basically what we were doing at that time was going through um, the the villages and the communities and trying to figure out what are different ways that we can uh, assist the church to help one alleviate some of the problems they're having uh, from through uh, could be education could be providing um, humanitarian aid uh, could it be you know providing technology and things like that mm -hmm. and so during that trip we went through about six or seven different cities and towns and what was amazing was Every single one of the cities that I went to, we went to actually, I had lived in that city. <laughs> really? <laughs> I was literally retracing my life. So it was, it was a very surreal uh, experience for me because I kept telling my pastor, you know, I used to live here when I was five or I used to live here when I was 10. And finally I was like, did you live everywhere you were in, in Kenya? It's like, no, it just, my, my dad was a social worker. 
and he used to work for the government. So usually every at every couple of years we would we would uh, we get transferred from uh, one city to the other. Yeah. And and, and it's, it was a really surreal experience. And so but it also just so happened that, it just yeah, so happened that single, those oh, wow. six places we went to had lived in all those towns and cities. That's amazing. But what it really did for me was I was literally retracing my life. I got to walk back through all the places and experiences that I had and I could remember, you know, how I grew up and how life used to be. But also having come to a third a first world nation from a third world nation, um, and seeing life as it is in this country and now being able to see, you know, the, the life as it was when I grew up, it really hit home. Oh, at that yeah. at that moment, and I realized how blessed and how lucky I was to have gotten this chance to come to a first world nation. Oh yeah! And all the things that I take for granted here that are most basic needs in those in those in those in those communities that they don't have, you know, yeah. clean water and and uh, education and 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 food, you know, uh, guaranteed food. You know, for most of the communities, they can't guarantee food on the table for for their for their families. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, you know the the sewer people living beside sewers and daddy you know barely have houses and all those things and so um, it just really hit home and I realized how blessed and just sense of gratitude but also a huge sense of um, of responsibility yeah. because of the opportunity that had been put on uh, in front of me in in my hands and so when I came back and I shared that you know my 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 thoughts and feelings with my wife and that's when. You know, we decided that we wanted to create uh, a different future for ourselves. We wanted to to uh, live an extraordinary uh, extraordinary life, and uh, we wanted to have the financial freedom and have the the time to be able to go when God says go, uh, be able to you know be able to support people if we could, have the time to be able to go on mission trips, have the have the financial you know resources to be able to help communities and organizations that you know needed the needed needed the help. Yeah. And, and so, not just when it was you could work in a vacation from Exactly. Work or right? You know, you know the limitation of obviously nothing wrong with being an employee, it's just sure. that there were limitations on the vacation time and all that. And so, you know, we, we kind of did an analysis of where we are. We are both really young. I was, I think, around 26, 27. Uh, she was also around the same age, and we live in an apartment. So, you know, we basically decided we want to quit our jobs, <laughs> and we both start an IT company. Wow. And so uh, we saved enough money for about a year to, uh, actually, for one year, we saved money to cover expenses for 12 months. Nice. And then I left and started GXA, and then uh, she joined me one year later. Wow, and so we both jumped in, and 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 you know, the rest is history. That's amazing. Yeah, that's so incredible because it's amazing what happens too when when you have that vision and that awareness and that mm -hmm. bigger goal, and you know what you're going towards, and then everything doesn't mean it's not hard, doesn't mean mm -hmm. it's not difficult, but things seem to line up. Things seem, you know, the resources come. Um, Rather than just when you're day to day, oh yeah, it might be interesting to start a company, and yes. you know nothing really ever takes place. When you have that bigger vision to go towards, it's just amazing. And so, something else that that happened. So, I mean, you you formed GXA, be an IT company, but it was built around. It was so. It's just so amazing too that it's it's whole founding and reason for being. Was so that you can, you and your wife could both help all around the world. Correct. And so, how does that? That's gotta. That's got to infuse all throughout the company, doesn't it? From the beginning to now, it's 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 basically part of who we are. It's it's the fabric of who we are as a company is philanthropy, yeah. and 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 empowerment and making a difference. And and so and that's our, our why our purpose for the company is twofold. One is. You know, we are an IT company. We want to deliver the best in class IT and deliver the best security services to our clients and serve our customers, you know, to the best of our ability and deliver, you know, the expertise they need to be able to build their businesses because we understand small businesses, you know, they run this country, yeah. right? And, and they need technology, they need tools for, to empower their employees so they can do more and they need to minimize risk. Uh, by making sure that you know the you know IT does not introduce risk into the business, and they need IT to empower and give them the outcome that they need for the business. So our job is to become that 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 
conduit to help our clients um, implement technology better. Yeah. But also, you know, our second purpose is to serve through philanthropy. You know, use our resources, use our, use our time. Uh, you, we work, our employees are very involved. Uh, as owners, we're very involved in the community, locally here and also internationally. Uh, and we're both passionate about making sure that the company is, is always focused on how do we, any extra resources we have, be it time, be it money, uh, how do we make sure that we're maximizing that and helping other people who are less fortunate? Yeah, and it's so interesting because you've obviously been a very successful company. I mean, you've been doing this almost 20 years now or, or right. around there. And, I mean, you don't stay in business that long <laughs> not doing a good job. And I think that's what's so interesting, too, is that you can't have one without the other in this vision that you've created, too, because if it was all philanthropy and that was the whole focus and it wasn't providing an amazing level of service and mm -hmm. through that IT and that what you weren't so skilled and um, purposeful in there you wouldn't have as much to support the other so exactly. it's a, I just I love how intertwined those two things need to be and then they have been for you I think it's, I think it's and, awesome. and for us it's 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 we didn't realize how powerful that was until we started running the business and started maturing it. And we started getting more and more of our clients who come to us because they see that. They oh, really? look at our website, they see, you know, we are not only obviously we, are, we, are, we deliver great service, but we are doing something with our money that's just bigger than, you know, just for the purpose of making money. Yeah. Right? We are making a difference in the community. And, and they ask, we start having more conversations about, hey, how do you guys do your philanthropy? Let's, sh we share a little bit about that. And that's really, really exciting. Oh, that's um, great. But also, we are finding more and more of our employees that, will, that come in and they join our team is because they see the work that we do, you know, in the community, here locally and internationally. Mm -hmm. They say, I really like what you guys do with your with your company and how you're making an impact in the world and I want to be a part of that. Oh, and, wow. and, and so it, we didn't initially intend it to be that way, sure. but it just kind of turned out that because of our p huge focus on philanthropy and using the business to make a difference in the world, it's attracted a very unique set of clients and a unique set of uh, team members who are who, are, who's, who already do that in some ways, even, you know, personally, right? But mm -hmm. now they want to be part of a company that I can, can do that in a bigger way. Right. And I think that's, that's, that shows the value of really being public with what you do. I mean, the fact that that is on your site, you know, mm -hmm. I think is so valuable. And it's, I, I think people get... I don't know. It's such a it's such a strange topic sometimes that people get on both sides of the issue. Yeah. Some people are just like, well, I'm just going to do what I do anonymously and, yeah. and that stuff, and that's fine. I mean, it's all a personal preference stuff. And then yes. other people are like, well, let me put this here, and maybe that'll attract some more, you know, yeah. some more people and, and everything. And there's, it's so important to have that right blend because I I see exactly exactly from the example that you just gave the value in. It's not about Look at us. We're giving this stuff. It's no. about you're going to you're going to get way more resources to you and thus help that cause at the end by sharing that. And I think that's just what it is. Like without an agenda, it's just we need to share this message more. It really does. That's and that's the only reason we put it out there. Yeah. And because initially when we started, we didn't share it. But we still did it. We went to mission trips. We've supported several computer, uh, you know, empowerment projects across across the world. We've, we've you know, helped big, big water wells, and we support children homes across across Africa. We do a lot of work in, in uh, locally here with uh, you know different organizations. We've always done it. It's just mm -hmm. been part of our DNA as a company. Yeah. Because that's the reason we started the company. But as we started to talk more and more with our customers, talk more and more with our partners and our vendors, we saw an interest mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in what we were doing. Uh, we'd I'll go meet with clients and, you know, it would be a regular IT strategy meeting and half the time we'll talk about IT <laughs> wow. You know, they're asking, how, how you, we've tried to do it, we, wow. we can never do it. How are you doing it? 
And so we started sharing how we built it, how we built a philanthropical arm and, you know, how we are engaging the employees and how, you know, we really shifted our culture around that. And we found that we needed to share because others, other business owners wanted, wanted to do the same thing. They just yeah. didn't know how or they didn't have the time and the expertise. And so, um, but also we realized also employees wanted to be more involved. Oh, yeah. Right. And, to and, me, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah, to me, it's, it's much like, it's much like a any other company, even, you know, any business endeavor, you can be phenomenal at what you do, but if you can't tell the story of what you do, you're going to be limited and small. And so I think the same thing applies here. When you can tell that, everything expands and you can be purposeful with essentially marketing it, yeah. right? But but I think it also it's, for, for us, it's realizing that, I, personally, I feel like that's the role of business. Hmm. We're here to solve problems. Yeah. We're here to make a difference in different areas, but that's really the role of business is how do we make an impact in the world? And, and, and so how do you create a community of business owners, of like-minded people who want to be more than just making money, uh, but also want to make a bigger difference, right? right? And if we can partner together as communities and, 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 and be able to use our resources and ideas and be able to make a bigger impact, why not? I think that's the whole, that's the whole goal. And so what we've done and what we continue to do now is we are even focusing more with the customer. So we have several clients now we partner beyond just kind of the business side and uh, partner, partner ar- al- along the philanthropic projects. Oh, really? Right? So for example, we are going through a, a project now where we are putting together about a hundred computers that we are going to send out to, uh, uh, B- Badagri, Nigeria, right? There's a computer, there's a, a, a community transformation center that's being built out there by a, a, an organization called Imani Bridges. And, and so we are, we are focused on uh, collecting computers from our clients, uh, customers who have used computers that no longer use them. And we're going to, we're, re- we're setting them up and getting them ready to be shipped out there. But also we've worked with some of our clients and they're donating other things. So we have a manufacturing customer who's going to donate uh, basically um, several machining, right, for for teaching and all that stuff, oh, yeah. uh, manufacturing machines. And we have also other partners who are going to do the same thing. So that's the power of partnerships is now you can do more where instead of just donating a few computers, now you have your clients, you know, one of our clients actually gave us 60 computers. Good. That they've, nice. they've been trying to figure out how to get rid of them. So they're just <laughs> right. sitting in this room for the last five years. And like, I don't know what to do with these computers. <laughs> and we told them about the projects. And they're like, oh, yeah, you can come and get them. Right? Wow. And so um, and, and so that like... goes back to your, your message. You said sharing that message, mm-hmm. you realize that you can do more uh, if you you work as a community and, and share the information versus just doing very isolated projects uh, oh, by yeah. yourself. And now, too, you're going and giving back that exact thing that you benefited from back in university with those you know that room it's, full of computers that, that you, is the yeah. amazing thing about oh. this whole story is that uh when i came back and we started doing the philanthropy i realized that i was blessed and it was really my chance to bless others yeah and i had to give back because i was all this was also given to me yeah and right? you see firsthand very first hand <laughs> the the it's not just it's not this idea of oh yeah things will be better overall if they have computers but it's this very tangible this is how a life changes because those computers get donated in all of here's 20 years of what's happened right? exactly my, my career was completely changed because of that donation at Computer Lab. Oh, yeah. And so my goal is to also create the same opportunity for another child, another person, you know, somewhere around the world, yeah. right? And passing that along to the next generation. And so something, and, and you talk about those, those partnerships. I, I know one kind of huge thing going on, too, that you had mentioned on the phone was sort of, isn't it a collection of other IT companies that are coming yeah. together as well? Yes. So we, we this idea came up uh, sometime last year. Where I was talking to other IT vendors who were part of this peer group of other IT companies across 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 the nation and actually across the world. And we meet a couple of times a year, sharing knowledge and ideas around how to best practices on how to you know build 
um, build our businesses. And we came up with this idea of how, what if we all came together as IT vendors and we uh, put together like a non-profit organization where we will select very specific projects across the world around technology and go out and actually either do uh, technology upgrades for a non-profit hospital or find a school in a slum school somewhere in you know South Africa or wherever it is or you know Costa Rica and go in and just provide brand new technology equipment and provide training and provide that technology empowerment for them right and so we we have now a group of about six um, members that we who joined the group and we're actually working on a project in Costa Rica where we uh, we, we, we basically found a hospital out there that provides essentially free medical services to uh, the community around it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to refresh all their computers and pro provide them uh, brand new technology that they can actually use. Oh, that's incredible. Wow. And the, yeah, one more example. And so, and so the goal, together. yeah, coming together where, you know, GXA can maybe only do one of these, one of these projects a year. Right. And if you bring in multiple organizations together with a common goal, you can do several of these every year and make a much oh, bigger yeah. impact. That's, that's just amazing. I love that too. And I also don't want to don't want to skim past the company you built <laughs> as well, <laughs> mm -hmm. going through all of this because it's and, and I and I'm sure much like you talked about your mm -hmm. your organizations. I mean the the client meetings you have, mm -hmm. and half the time is <laughs> spent talking about this. Yeah, it's so amazing to talk about. But I, I don't want to skim past the company you built because I think that's pretty amazing, especially some things you're doing around cybersecurity right now yes. and. and Fill us in on, on a lot of that. Yeah. Well, I mean, all the philanthropy that we do wouldn't be possible if we weren't delivering the best in class services to our clients. Yeah. Right. So, the business aspect of GXA, you know, making sure that, you know, from a delivery standpoint, we are, we are taking care of our customers. We're helping, um, in, you know, implement better technology for them that impacts their business. Uh, that's really been a big focus. And it's one of the things you learn as you, you know, starting a business is a great idea. Um, and then you jump in, you realize there's a lot more to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I call a business, you know, a real life boot camp, right? Oh, yeah. Because you get to learn, you know, when I, when we started the business, you know, it was, I was basically an IT guy, you know, right. that's all I yeah, knew. I mean, yeah, paint that picture a little bit too, because you get, you, you both had this great idea and it all makes sense on paper, mm -hmm. but, but then you take the, and I, I think you, ha you, you approached it perfectly. Like, let's make sure we've got a year's worth of yes. of living expenses and everything like that, which is phenomenal. And so many people are just like, eh, let's give this a shot, you know? Um, but what's that? So what's that first step in like, okay, now you've got to get your own clients. Now you've got to have infrastructure. Now you've got to... <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we, 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 we started planning about a year before we started the company. And, you know, I was able to, I had several contacts at that time that I'd built, um, you know, walking through the, the previous company. And I reached out to some of my contacts and I told them, you know, hey, I'm, I'm going to start a business, an IT company. Would you be interested in, you know, using us as your IT, IT, IT vendor? And so out of that conversation and networking, I found about five companies that were willing to use us uh, as awesome. IT. So when we actually jumped in and started the company, we already had about five clients that oh, uh, had committed to, to, to using GXA as the IT vendor. So that, that, that helped us jumpstart. The, the business yeah. and and so those the first two years I was basically providing IT support to those to those five to six clients and what happened is uh, as I deliver that service and you know we continue to uh, help our clients they started referring us to other businesses oh, and perfect. it just started to organically grow that way and it was there, there wasn't much sales and marketing at the time right and and, and so and we didn't have an additional employees so it was you know, very easy to, you know, to continue to run the business. But we got to a certain point where the business could not really sustain itself without a, a, a very formal, you know, business development engine. Right. Right. And also, we could not really scale unless we started adding employees oh, and more yeah. people. Oh, yeah. And so that's when you suddenly realize, um, you know, running a business is more than just providing great IT support. Right. And you got to build an engine that can actually sustain itself and that they can scale. And so, um, you know, we, I remember an incident that actually kind of hit it home when we had our first son, uh, our son Zach. And I was, 
at the time obviously doing all the IT support we were basically a, a one man IT shop and um, and my wife did all the back back end stuff all the accounting all the HR all the uh, all the business uh, kind of the back you know the office administration and you know she was pregnant with with her son Zach and she was about to uh, go through go, go through labor and I had this one a big project that I was doing for one of our customers who were moving offices and and so it was a you know I believe a Friday morning and I had woken up early in the morning around you know five o'clock went to the client site and I started shutting down the systems and getting them ready for the actual move yeah and I had everything shut down shut down and I was starting to work with the movers to you know pack all the computers and the servers and, and get them out the computer equipment and get them out to the new office location this was meant was supposed to be a three-day project right and, and so during that moment with everything shut <laughs> off <laughs> my wife called me and she said my water just broke oh my <laughs> goodness no and one to call so, no i had yeah. no one to call i had no backup person i had oh. no um i had no I had no idea. I never had not planned for it because I was the only IT guy at, oh, yeah. you know, at the time, and I just went into straight panic, and and so I just started making phone calls to the, all the different people that I knew of who who, who were IT guys, and luckily enough, one of my friends uh, had to take time off from his job. <laughs> he had to take the day off, and he came, he rushed and came out, you know, about an hour and a half later, and I just kind of did a quick knowledge transfer yeah. of what I what I just done <laughs> and I just let him let him run with it and I rushed to to back home to go see my wife. By the time our neighbor had taken her to the hospital. Yeah. But oh goodness, we goodness. were in the delivery ta- in the delivery room and I had my computer on, <laughs> you know, because I was trying to help this uh my friend, you know, do the move and get all the systems up back up and running oh, yeah. while helping my <laughs> wife with delivery. Yeah, but, breathe, uh, breathe. It's good. It's good. Yes, <laughs> exactly. It was, you know, it was, a, it, it was, it was, a, it was, it was a quite an experience. But you know, after that, that's when I realized that this was not sustainable. Yeah. You know, I realized not only was I obviously um, not building good business, mm-hmm. I was also at risk to my clients. Right. Right. Uh, you know, if we were going to deliver great service to our customers, we had to build a team. Yeah. And also for us to build a team, we had to build a, a sales engine mm-hmm. that could bring enough customers to actually support the team that we the, the, that we hired. Oh, yeah. Because you get to that, that, that kind of precipice, right? You get to that, that point of like, you either stay small and do that forever mm-hmm. or you take the leap. And it really is this leap of, you're gonna hire people to then go get more and yeah and hope that it comes and work towards it and yeah oh exactly so and, and that's really where we that's the point at that point that's my wife and I talked and Alicia and we said okay we can either scale this business or just be comfortable here yeah and and we decided for us to be able to deliver you know best in class service to our customers we had to scale the business yeah and so luckily enough she has a HR masters in HR. And so, you know, the recruiting aspect and, you know, the, the, the managing <laughs> the HR and all that was just all covered. Nice. And she did a phenomenal, does a phenomenal job managing the back office of the, of the business. And, and so I had to suddenly learn how to sell. Ah. I never sold before. I'd never done any marketing. And I basically had to relearn those. I went to several conferences. I had to, you know, learn how to go out and approach prospects, make phone calls, go knock on doors you know, yeah. deliver a sales spiel and all that, all that good stuff. So that was a completely new skill that I had to build. And, yeah. um, you know, it took several years to be able to, to hone it, but, um, but you so know, that's valuable. part of, yeah, yeah. that's part of, uh, you know, a, 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 a basic skill that you're going to have as a business owner is you're going to be able to sell and talk about your business. Oh yeah. Cause you're yeah. constantly selling. You're even always if, selling. You, yeah. Even if you've got 20 sales guys, you're constantly you're always selling that. Yeah. Doing business development. Yes. So that's amazing. You went in and just, dug in and like okay let's figure this out <laughs> let's let's jump in i tell you the, the hardest thing that i had to learn to do was making phone calls and call you know make call calls oh yeah <laughs> that's the worst and so yeah the first year i was the one making phone calls i would make 20 to 30 calls every day yeah and you know 90 percent of them will say no right but over time you know i just you know i got used to it oh my gosh yeah, yeah that's i mean that's the painful stuff i mean that's that's those are the kind of things honestly though that, that keep people out of business like that will actually 
you know, they'll try it for a little bit and they have to be the salesperson or something. And they, they won't continue because of that. So I think it's another area that's just like, that's amazing to sort of, again, you have this bigger vision. This is what we're building. So then it's just a matter of getting there. Like no matter what, we're getting there and let's figure it out and push through. And being, being, and you're always learning. Yeah. You're always learning. You always have to be, um, you always have to have the mindset where, you know, we are always, we, we don't know everything. Yep. You know, we're always learning. That's really the culture that we built is how do we become, how would we stay inquisitive mm-hmm. all the time? And especially being in an IT industry where everything is changing all the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we have to, to, to love learning new things, new ideas, new technologies, and being able to package those and deliver those to our customers so that we can deliver better service to them. Yeah, and translate yeah. to them why they need these things. And... Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so what are some of the, the, the top things going on right now in IT and cybersecurity and everything that's, that's, that is really changing and you're, you're kind of staying at the forefront for your clients? I think the big thing not right now is cybersecurity. You know, every, with, with the, with the cyber security landscape out there, out there in the market, every business owner is concerned about, is my business secure? Is IT introducing risk to the business? Mm-hmm. Do I have, a, is my IT audit ready, right? If I get audited today, will, 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 will I pass, right? Uh, if you're in, in, in a compliance, uh, you know, industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing also is, you know, do I have all the controls and the tools that I need to make sure that I'm securing my business? Right. Right. So a lot of business owners, you know, including me, you know, you, you, you stay up at night, you know, trying wondering that. Right. And so uh, one of the things that we are, we are, we're, we're doing now is really helping our clients um, do a security maturity level assessment. Right. So we're going through and helping them identify where they are from a security maturity level standpoint. Uh, and, like where and they should be based on where they should be. Right. So depending yeah. on that, the government, through several uh, regulations, they've provided basic um, standards around how a secure IT environment should look like, mm-hmm. right? So there are, you know, NISC 800 controls, there are con- uh, critical security controls that are out there that you can use to actually assess your environment and understand exactly where you fall. And these are our best practices and, and, and controls that you should have really in place as a business owner mm-hmm. for your business. and. When you have all those in place, it would reduce significantly reduce the level of risk your business would have through a you know cybersecurity incident. And what, and what are some of those things like? So, so a company that's you know they're not in e-commerce or anything mm-hmm. like that, but yeah, they have a site. But what are some of those areas that maybe they're not looking out for because they're not their their alerts aren't up enough? So one of the things people people assume is that um, that the, your IT guy who's doing the day-to-day support, uh, who's taking care of your network, who's taking care of your servers. He's also your information security guy. You know, the reality is the IT department is very different from my information security department, Uh, right? And so, um, and a a lot of business owners, what I found is when I talk to them about information security, they say, oh, I thought, I think my IT guy does that or my IT company does (laughs) that. And I usually go through these steps where I educate them around what are the differences between an IT company and an information security company. but, you know, some of the basic things that most business owners don't have is, for example, an information security policy, yeah. right? How do you implement implement security in your business? That is not something you can outsource. That's something that as a business owner, yeah. you you have the due diligence to make sure you have a policy in place in terms of how is security implemented in my business. And from that policy, then we can implement technology controls, right? And say, you know, we need to have any virus on all the machines. We want to make sure all the mas- all the systems are being, you know, inventories. Who is allowed into our network? Who's not? Right? right. What kind of computers, you know, should have? What kind of software should we have installed on our computers? Right. And how do we monitor and limit access for unauthorized access to the network? Right. Yeah. Um, you know, are we doing continuous monitoring of us of our security, or do we only have passive tools out there? Right. You know, right. so a lot of the, you know, most of the times business owners might think, well, I have antivirus or I have a firewall right. and that's my security. Well, it used to be about 10 years ago, not anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, just like it used to be sufficient, you know, 40 years ago to just have a lock on your door. Right. Right. But that's just not enough in, in, in this uh, climate. And you got to have, you know, ongoing monitoring of your house and, and, and all the other good stuff. So information security gives you this framework 
where now you can implement tools and controls so you can make sure you're minimizing um, you know cyber security risk in your in your business oh that's great that's that is so especially for those of us who aren't in that world and mm-hmm. don't want to it's so easy to kind of brush aside until something happens and and, and <laughs> unfortunately that's what usually happens is yeah. we, we get involved when there's an incident yeah right uh, you know your business has been hacked or you know or, yeah your, something like, internal or something internal work. yeah has, has happened and so there's already an incident that's happened and then that's when there's panic and you know you get your info information security company or your IT company involved yeah. but there are a lot of proactive things that can be done and processes in place that really can be em- em- deployed and employed in the organization where on an ongoing basis you you have these practices and systems that you're doing to minimize, you know, those incidents from happening in the first place. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's a life insurance policy, essentially, right? It, re- it really is, and and a lot of it is not even the technology. A lot of it is just process. Mm. You know, uh, how do we handle certain incidents when they happen? You know, who's responsible for you know uh, monitoring these types of alerts, right? So that yeah. you know, when they happen, we have somebody watching them and taking action on them, and address, yeah, and addressing them. Right? That makes so much sense. This is just amazing. I, I appreciate you telling. Coming in and, and both sharing your story, uh, but then also, uh, you know, educating <laughs> us on on that side of things as well. How can people follow along on the on the internet there and, and track you down and follow GXA? Yeah, so our website is www.gxait.com. Yeah. and uh, so you know, go to our website. Uh, there's a link there where you can actually uh, call us or uh, reach out to us by email, and we'll be glad to help you if you have any questions. Um, but, um, yeah, I had a great time. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks so much for being on. Yeah, thank this you. This is great. If you're in the Dallas area, let's connect in person. I'm at the Coffee House Cafe on Preston and Frankfurt every Tuesday morning at 8 a.m., hosting an awesome meetup where we talk business, startups, and tech. It's an amazing room of people to network with. And most weeks, what we do is we dig in and mastermind for the folks in the room and connect everyone to the resources they need to grow. I'll see you there. I hope you are all just as amazed and impressed with George as I am. Uh, just an incredible guy. Um, again, I think what he and his wife have built um, and what they're doing all over this globe uh, is is just phenomenal. So definitely head over to his site, gxait.com, and Find out more about both their company, for those of you who need those, that IT and that cybersecurity help, um, but also um, his bigger mission in life. Um, he's got all of that there. Follow along. See how you can help and get involved and you know, have a discussion with George and, and see how he's doing it even more and how you can implement that into your company um, and help your employees give back, as he mentioned. So if you like interviews like this, Make sure you subscribe here on YouTube. Um, And if you're listening on iTunes, on your favorite podcast platform, make sure you head over to iTunes, leave us a review there. It is a fantastic help to us. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one. It's Saturday night. It was Saturday night and I'm feeling kind of silly With a coat on cause the air was chilly But I'ma make my way out to the record spot Gotta find some new breaks for the beats to rock I gotta come with the flavor like some lifesavers On now and later's got the beat maker If I'm a player it's like you take deck And if you miss the gig then take a rain check Stacks of wax piled high to the ceiling Need a U-Haul truck if I would take a